LLM-driven agents are an exciting area of software development, offering innovative solutions that enhance how systems interact, reason and make decisions. Combination of these properties opens up a possibility of building new kind of software systems that consists of many such autonomous agents. In this video, we will explore how to design such systems using self-organizing techniques and discuss the broader impact this approach has on modern software engineering design. Before diving into that, let's first address a couple of important questions. Why use multiple agents instead of just one agent? Firstly, breaking down large problems into smaller tasks often leads to more efficient solutions. Multi-agent system architectures are well suited for this purpose, allowing specialized agents to tackle various components of a larger task in a distributed manner. Another question we might ask is, why focus on multi-agent systems that self-organize? The simple answer is that traditional software engineering practices aren't sufficient to design these complex systems in a way that maximizes their full potential. And that is why we draw inspiration from natural systems and their self-organizing properties to serve as the foundation for control and coordination of our multi-agent system. However, designing software around principles of complex adaptive systems is challenging. It pushes us beyond standard practices, forcing us to rethink how we approach system design in new innovative ways. To illustrate how self-organizing systems differ from traditional software architectures, let me share an example from my PhD research. I developed a simulation model of a self-organizing multi-agent system designed to specialize and provide various types of computational services. The system had two groups of agents, service consumers and service providers. Consumers would fulfill customer requests by finding agents that offer the services they needed, while providers would adapt based on demand, changing their services to meet the needs of consumers. Each agent used local reinforcement learning, allowing the system to learn which providers to select and which services to offer. Importantly, there was no central coordinator. The system's efficiency emerged from the agent's ability to learn, adapt and share knowledge with one another. When a system is initialized without any knowledge of its best configuration, it exists in a disordered state, with agents randomly exploring different setups while communicating with one another. Over time, as agents adapt to each other and learn about their surroundings, they begin to form stable groups, each specializing in specific tasks. This transition signals the system's shift to a self-organized state, enabling it to efficiently meet customer requests. Even in its self-organized state, the system isn't confined to a fixed configuration. It stays dynamic, constantly balancing the use of existing structures with the exploration of new ones to optimize its performance over time. When disruptions occur, such as when half the agents need to re-specialize, the system adapts and reorganizes itself autonomously without any central control or single point of failure. This resilience and ability to continually adapt is the beauty of self-organization emerging from the local decisions made by individual agents. This is precisely why self-organization is such an attractive approach. It enables systems to adapt, optimize and thrive in dynamic environments without relying on centralized control. By leveraging local interactions and decentralized decision-making, self-organizing systems can effectively respond to changes, ensuring resilience and efficiency even in the face of disruptions. This capability not only enhances performance, but also significantly reduces the need for constant oversight and maintenance. Let's look at how we can create LLM-driven self-organizing multi-agent systems by first clarifying what we mean by an intelligent agent. An intelligent agent is an entity that possesses specific goals, abilities and knowledge. It operates within an environment which it can observe and interact with through various actions. Moreover, it has the capacity to remember its past actions and the effects those actions had on its environment. 
When we apply this abstract definition to the conversational AI domain, the agent becomes a software component whose decision-making is powered by a large language model. In addition, the LLM may be fine-tuned using LoRa adapters to make it more effective at specific tasks. Its knowledge can be expanded through a retrieval augmented generation mechanism, and its actions are executed using various provided tools. Now that we've covered how an individual agent is structured, let's explore a basic use case for a multi-agent system that we will use in the remainder of this presentation. Imagine a company automating part of its customer service with intelligent voice assistants. These assistants can handle customer calls and based on the customer request, route them to either a product expert agent or a customer support agent, each specialized in different areas. This simple scenario demonstrates how multiple agents can collaborate to efficiently address customer needs. For the sake of experiment, let's assume that such multi-agent system is initially built using traditional software engineering approach and has no self-organizing mechanisms built in. When we visualize the operation of such multi-agent system, customer requests shown as green arrows come in simultaneously and are intercepted by interface agents. These agents then delegate tasks to either product experts or customer support agents. This process can be seen as parallel execution of workflows, each one executed by three agents. In this setup, every customer is handled by an identical group with the system behaving like a deterministic state machine. While this rigid structure ensures control and predictability, it stifles the key advantage of self-organization, spontaneous adaptation. There's no room for agents to discover new patterns or adapt, as all interactions are hard-coded and rigid. Now let's move beyond this rigid system and explore how we can modify it to enable self-organization. If we want the system to adjust its structure on its own, it can't be rigid. It needs enough flexibility, what we call degree of freedom, to explore different configurations. This doesn't guarantee it will find the best solution, but it expands the possibilities, making it more likely to find an optimal setup. In our example, one way to introduce this flexibility is to avoid having identical agents serve all customers. Instead, we create diversity within each agent type, product experts, customer support, and interface agents. While these agents perform the same functions, they differ in how they deliver services. We'll discuss these differences more when we talk about individual agent adaptation. The key point is that this diversity allows agents to dynamically reconfigure their interactions with others, opening up opportunities to identify and collaborate with peers that deliver the best service quality. Another key step in enabling self-organization is allowing agents to learn from past experiences using techniques like reinforcement learning. When combined with reinforcement learning, an interface agent can learn and reward product expert agents based on quality of their service during multiple customer interactions. This approach helps the system continuously refine agent behavior, engaging with agents that work together to improve performance, increase efficiency, and enhance customer satisfaction. To further enhance this local optimization, individual agents can share their performance improving knowledge with other agents. This collective sharing helps propagate improvements across the system, allowing it to configure itself more effectively through a coordinated collective effort. However, one critical aspect is balancing system configuration, exploration and exploitation. The two forces driving self-organization. It's a tricky balance. Too much exploration, seen as a constant search for new service providers, and the system is in constant flux. Too much exploitation, on the other hand, seen as a constant reliance only on one provider, and the system may get stuck in a suboptimal state. The goal is to find the middle ground, keeping the system adaptive yet stable, which is key to achieving optimal results. By introducing more degrees of freedom to the system and equipping agents with local learning and information sharing mechanisms, we should expect the system to create shifting interaction patterns. The system finds optimal balance between structure exploration and exploitation. It should form visible clusters, shown as yellow ellipses, 
where agents collaborate and share information to boost overall performance. The fact that not all agents converge to the same setup shows the system is continuously exploring better configurations and adjusting to new unexpected conditions. The dynamic reconfiguration and local learning strategies we've discussed earlier wouldn't be complete without yet another mechanism that substantially contributes to the system's diversity and reconfigurability, the ability of individual agents to adapt. On one hand, adaptation acts as a self-correcting mechanism. Agents learn from past experience, spot flows, and make small adjustments to improve. But if we take it a step further, adaptation can also drive more divergent, evolutionary-like solutions, new approaches that the system can evaluate and either adopt or discard. Let us now explore how these abstract ideas of adaptation can be applied to LLM-driven agents. In the first case, adaptation can be implemented as a self-correction module. This module would evaluate the agent's current efficiency and suggest behavioral changes to address any gaps. These adjustments would then be integrated into the agent's behavior. While this may seem abstract, thanks to the growing reasoning abilities of LLMs, we can prototype this by introducing specialized self-evaluation and self-correction LLMs. These would adjust the agent's system prompts, effectively allowing them to rewrite their own instructions and update their behavior in real time. We can take this even further by creating two adaptation loops. The first loop operates during a conversation, enabling quick adjustments within a single customer interaction. The second loop functions over a longer period, evaluating performance across multiple interactions and driving more substantial changes. An even more intriguing concept is self-evolution. Instead of merely tweaking an agent's behavior, we propose a radical new version of its behavior which is then introduced as a new instance of an agent within the multi-agent system. This evolutionary change will be assessed by other agents in the system. They will evaluate whether this new behavior is an improvement, and if they find it beneficial, they will adopt it. If not, the new agent will be discarded during cooperative problem solving. This process allows the system to continually evolve and optimize, ensuring it remains responsive and effective in addressing various challenges. While the idea of self-evolution sounds promising, it's unlikely that new untested agents will be directly integrated into production. Instead, a more advanced hybrid approach may be used, blending virtual experimentation with real-world application. In this hybrid approach, agents first experiment with new behaviors in a simulated environment using trial and error to identify optimal strategies. The most successful behaviors are then gradually introduced into production, ensuring smooth transitions. Once deployed, agents are closely monitored with feedback loops for continuous improvement. This hybrid method combines the safety of simulation with the practicality of real-world application, creating a resilient, self-evolving system capable of long-term growth and adaptation. This concludes our exploration of the challenges involved in engineering LLM-driven self-organizing multi-agent systems. We are entering an exciting era where advancements in machine learning and deep learning enable us to create sophisticated decision-making algorithms. By using these algorithms as the driving force behind multi-agent systems, we can further enhance the evolution of artificial intelligence at the systemic level. This approach offers opportunities to develop systems that continuously learn, optimize, and adapt to changing external conditions. Only time will tell if this is the right approach for controlling human-built systems. But if it is, paradigm shift has already begun, leading us toward radically different software architectures and engineering principles. Thank you for all your time.